aside from having a good oscilloscope, a digital voltometer, and a capacitor checker, there's some somewhat unorthodox pieces of equipment you probably want to utilize in your TV repair business that will help you isolate problems faster. One of them is the use of a hair dryer. A lot of times a TV will come into my shop and it'll have an intermittent problem. And I find that by taking a hair dryer and heating up various parts of the circuit board, it'll actually co cause the circuit to come to life temporarily and it'll help me isolate where the problem might be. So absolute uh, must for your business is a hair dryer. I happen to have a heat gun here that's got a smaller orifice on it and I kind of like that. Of course, you want to be careful not to overheat your parts. You don't want to burn anything up in the process of testing it. Another extremely valuable thing to have is freeze spray. A lot of times you'll have to freeze a certain part of the board and that'll cause it to come back to life again, temporarily of course, and that'll help you isolate the problems that way. Now this is a telephone amplifier that I've got right here. It's actually just an inductive coil and a suction cup on the end and these, are, these were pretty popular in the old days you put it on the back of your telephone and it would pick up whatever is being said and amplify it. Well, these have other purposes too that I started using in my business and I find it extremely valuable. Um, let's say that you're checking a switch mode power supply and you're wondering if the switch mode power supply is operating. You can simply take this inductive coil and put it next to the switch mode transformer and if it's sending pulses, if it has pulses going through it rather, you'll hear it. Now, in this business, you, over time, you'll learn to identify one hum compared to another. For example, here's a 60-cycle hum that I pick up when I put it near this TV here. And the TV's off, believe it or not, but it's still got a 60-cycle hum. And yet, here's a switch mode power supply. You can hear it's got a very different, uh, different sound to it. So, little tips like that kind of make things go smoother sometimes. Uh, here's another one that I've been doing for quite a long time. Uh, this is a neon light. This neon light's a gas-filled light bulb, and they light up simply by putting them near uh, a high voltage source. For example, I can put this near my flyback transformer on a TV set, and if the flyback transformer has uh, pulses going through it, it'll actually light it up. So, for what it's worth, that's just a few more tips. I hope you're finding some of these helpful. Maybe at some point I'll put together a little... Uh, course that I can offer. But for the time being, I just thought I'd put these out here and see what kind of response I get. So if you enjoy these, please leave a comment or let me know. Thanks.